What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Ginger on Wheels channel where we get to test and unbox the latest electrically wheeled gadgets. I'm here with my friend Chris and he is the owner of MyMaxMods.com and we're here in this pseudo warehouse of his. He's rebuilding it into like an actual warehouse. Yeah, uh, it's behind here. This is a temporary location where we have a huge, uh, big, bigger warehouse uh, with actual stations repairs. Yeah, so that's under in the works right now. But today we're here to work on the Ninebot Max that I fried in one of the videos. I'll link above now and in the description where I rode this thing around on the hottest day ever to see if we could fry it and the answer was yes. So we're gonna open it up today and see exactly what went wrong. We'll roll the intro real quick and fix the scooter up. Step one, what we're doing right now, we're using a Torx, it's a size 15, T15. That's our T15. Uh, anyway, there's like 15 bolts that run along the bottom of the scooter. You just gotta remove those real quick. So we're taking this off carefully here. What we're doing right now is we're just opening up, take a look, see uh, what possibly happened. Obviously it's not turning on. Uh, so we're gonna disconnect our cable here. Uh, first thing we're looking at here is the phase wires. And you can see here uh, that they actually melted. Now a good indication to see if the controller's bad is if you spin the motor, it should be really, really hard to spin. Um, obviously in this case, it is not very hard to spin right now. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, usually in situations like these, this won't come off. Um, if you try and pull on it, so you, can, you might have to end up cutting it, but we'll upgrade these to uh, MR60 connectors. Anyways. Here's our melted connector. I imagine that's the problem, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll find out here in a second. So we're taking the controller out right now. The drill, the drill chuck is a little too big. So if you're looking right here, here's the controller. Uh, the screw essentially just goes on the side, one and two. And what we're doing is we're just removing these screws uh, so that we can get it out. Now the other one, you can actually just loosen it and it actually lifts up and this side will kind of just slide out. And I'll show you guys here. Right. And watch out for a ground cable here. Kind of lift up right here. And there's a little zip tie right here. Here's has it, um, just cut it off. Where was that? Just right here. Oh, just holding all the cables? Yep. Just so we have more room to work with the cables, see how much more room we have. Yeah. Uh, whereas they're together, especially the ground cable the charger. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead, once these are kind of out, uh, you'll notice all the plugs here, we're gonna pull these off one at a time. You have one right here for your BMS. This is gonna go to your rear brake. This is gonna go to your dashboard. And this one right here is gonna be your haul wires that navigate through here to the rear motor. Um, so real quick, just to show you guys, let's take a look. Go ahead and try and turn it off for me. All right. I can do that. Uh, turn it, hit the button once, see the headlight comes on. That's a dead scooter. Nope, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug this really quick here, phase wires, the rear brake, and our BMS wire. And we're just gonna quickly set it out of the way here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this other controller now and we're gonna plug it in and see if it turns on. Now, just to see if it turns on, you don't have to do anything special. I'll hook everything back up. You can literally just click uh, the dashboard wire in, plug the power cable into the new controller, and turn it on and see if it starts beeping away. Yeah, it's on now. All right. Yeah, headlight works. Okay, so that's good there. So it was a defective controller. Unplug. I guess let me move the power first. We'll remove the dashboard cable from the new controller. And we're going to take our cutters here. And we are going to cut the old. Like I said these are so insufficient, like they're, they're so, so bad. Uh, they're not like copper, they're just little, um, you know, coated. They're in here, they're super, super dinky. These are rated for 15 amps. Um, your stock 9-bot can put out 15 amps, even plus, 
uh, stock. That's why you'll see these. Um, the issue with these, you'll see these melting 90% of the time. Uh, it's a heat thing, but a lot of time it's from the regenerative braking as well. This may only be sending 15 amps um, or 20 amps to the, the rear motor. When it comes back to the braking, it's going to take all that power and then send it right back through the controller, and that's where the heat sits. Actually, in the video where this scooter fried, if you guys want to go back and watch it, right before it did, probably a couple minutes before, I was just coasting down a huge downhill, and I said in the video, let's hit the regen braking here. I'll bet you that'll heat it up some too. All right, let's get some regen braking going down the hill. I bet you that'll heat it up a little bit too. Holy mackerel, it is hot. And I was right. And it that probably is what did that, right? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. So 99% of these come from, I mean, almost all of them come from regen braking. Huh. It's a Gen 2 thing. Called uh, it. So it's uh, a, is... uh, but now that we got it unplugged, the motors out here, what we're gonna do, because we're gonna upgrade the motor connectors, is we're just gonna pull up on here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and push the wire down. I don't know if you can get in there here. It literally just comes down here, uh, right through this hole. Uh, but now that we got it unplugged, the motors out here, what we're gonna do, because we're gonna upgrade the motor connectors, is we're just gonna pull up on here. So there's a hole right here at the bottom. Um, and all we're gonna do is just push, take the wire again, un unhook it, and we're just gonna pull it out. And like I said, you can do these connector upgrades with the motor still in here. Um, I just personally, my recommendation is to remove it. Okay, so there's those off. Now that we have this unhooked, I'm gonna do one more test again. I just wanna verify that the uh, controller is bad. I just wanna make sure to remove the problem part. What I'm gonna do now is again, just plug just the uh, uh, controller in. I'm gonna plug the battery in. And I'm gonna have you try the controller. All right. Turn it on. Nope. nope. Nothing. Okay. So, what that means, if I'm looking here, there's two things that you can kind of distinctly look for in a controller to see if it is bad. Um, the first one, again, this is very, very rare. This is gonna be from like, um, you know, applying way too many volts to the controller, is this chip right here. Uh, that you'll see like a bunch of smoke inside the clear resin. There's a resin here. You'll see some smoke in there um, and that's going to be um, on there. Now, like I said, typically if it's not bad there, um, what you can go ahead and do, um, most of the time you're just going to assume this, one of these MOSFETs um, went bad uh, and to remove it, uh, you can take these off. Um, underneath here, you'll have one, two, three screws. Um, and you have to obviously remove the jelly in this plate, cut around the edge, uh, but you definitely can um, uh, replace the MOSFETs on here. Um, you just have to kind of get it out. And then the other secret is to heat up the back of the controller. Uh, once you kind of take an edge, a file, you kind of just scrape it right along the edges here to kind of loosen it from the sides. Take a heat gun, you heat the back up and kind of just pull on the phase wires a little bit. Um, I mean, not obviously like the point of prying it, but that should kind of help work it out. Uh, one other secret, um, you know, people one thing, is when you take these three screws off here, you take all this jelly off, you're gonna take all these little screws off into the individual MOSFETs and you're gonna wanna work this out. It's gonna make it getting it off so, so much easier. Um, kind of work this plate out first. Once this plate's out, then you have access to get the jelly um, or like the resin here in the back of the controller. And then once you have that, all the sides scraped off, heat the back of it up, kind of pull on this, it'll pop right out. So with that said, um, obviously this controller is done. We can uh, mess with it later. But we got a new controller here. Um, obviously now we have a new controller with our new phase wires and we don't have any phase wires on our motor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade these two MR60 connectors. So basically my post-production conclusion is that if you're 200 plus pounds and you got lots of hills in your area and you're riding with the 48 volt external kit, it's probably worth your time to upgrade to these MR60 connectors. They can handle twice the amperage output, twice the current. And also I just wanted to show you this cool uh, close up of the waterproof resin on the controller. If you ever wonder why your 9 bot's so waterproof, um, that's probably a very good reason why. Okay, so this is bonus chapter 2, tire removal. You want to reuse the sticker here. I said the sticker's not to boil it. The reason why we're taking the tire off here is because we want to get the tire and the controller on a little workstation and it makes it much easier to solder on the new connections. Once that's done, we can move to removing the side covers. 
Okay, so this is gonna be a 2.5 millimeter. It's an uh, Allen head. It's not a start bit. All right, it's gonna reveal our wheel and the rear bolt here. Again, just two holes. So once those are off, that will let us. Now this is gonna be an 18 millimeter. You need a wrench um, socket. I'm just using these just because most people have this. And we're just gonna go ahead and loosen it. And so this little washer, especially for reassembly, you wanna remember, this has a little hole right here that locks in uh, for this motor. So you wanna just make sure when you put the new one on, that that slides in there. And once that's the two bolts are off, you unfed the wire. You literally just take the left, right side, and the motor's on. Uh, if you guys notice here, I know this probably comes up a lot. Uh, if your motor starts with a nine, uh, you have a Gen two. If it starts with a six, you have a Gen one. You know, that's a really common question a lot of people ask. Uh, and again, the Gen one will have more torque. Uh, it'll have after eighty percent, your your whole power will drop down. But it'll have more torque. Gen two is going to have uh, better. Um, kind of reliability through the whole 100% of the battery, uh, and it's gonna be faster, uh, 18 to 21 miles per hour. But less torque. But yes, less torque. Okay, so, first thing we're gonna do uh, is once we've cut our, obviously cut all the connectors off, we're just gonna go through real quick here, make sure that when we pull them down, they are the same length. So how much of the wire do you want exposed usually? Like um, so the easiest way, if you guys are not sure, is if you just look at the connector here, just take the wire and then just stick it in the connector itself and that will show you how much uh, wire you want uh, to go in there. So the first thing we do um, is take our solder. Uh, I'm, I'm do about 480, 480 degrees. So what Chris is doing here is heating up the wire and applying solder to the end of each wire tip and that's called pre-tinning the wires and it makes it easier to install the connectors on the end when we're done. So you see how skinny the tip is. Um, typically for something like this, this is really, really hot. That's why it works. Uh, but typically for something like this, um, I prefer something like this, a little bit, a little bit thicker. It's kind of the same thing, uh, but you see how much wider it is. That's be something that will work better at heating um, the MR60s up. So this is like a special device that you have to hold the connector and that's the connector that's pre-tinned right now, right? Yep, so we just melted solder in there and the wire has solder on it. So all we're gonna do is melt the solder into the solder. The big, the, uh, this is the male, it's our uh, female. Uh, this is the male connector. Um, I use the female connector for the motor because we have to put it back through that valley and it has a uh, smaller surface area than uh, this one. So that's why I do use this one on the motor side and I leave this side for the controller. I'm just gonna melt the hole. Yeah, and so the, the secret is you wanna make sure both of them get equally as hot um, if you just melt one and I was to stick this in here, that would be a cold solder joint uh, and that would not stick very well. So you want to make sure both of them uh, melt, otherwise you will not get a good connection. So there we go. Pro tip. Okay, so when you're done, the biggest part, the most important part, outside of making sure they get a good connection here, is making sure that none of them are touching. Each one, you're going to notice here in the cap you have your dividers, uh, these little dividers here. Those are going to go in between, but you also want to make sure before you do that, you have nothing touching each other solder-wise, because that will create a short and blow your new controller, or it'll blow the controller that you're upgrading your connectors to. So here with the yellow, we're going to heat the wire up a little bit, heat the connector up a little bit, and we're just going to kind of melt it. Make sure it's kind of touching both. Just going to melt it in there, and it should just kind of slide right in, just like that. I want to get it kind of melty on the connector, kind of melty on the wire, and then smush them together and marry them together. Okay, so we got the uh, controller in. Um, what we're gonna do now, um, once this is all bolted and everything's plugged in, is we're gonna go ahead and plug in our new connector. And again, that's just gonna kind of tuck back here now with all these. Brand new, controllers. much smaller. I like the sleekness of it too. You don't have to deal with three things, it just turns into one thing. Yeah, literally, it just, it just comes and done super, super easy. It's actually really hard to press in there. Uh, but once you, they're mostly water resistant dish too. I've seen a lot of scooters get wet with those connectors that don't actually die. So no, no, like I said, because you, you literally have to go all the way in there. Um, we'll plug the battery in, and we will turn it on. It should work, right? Moment hit, of truth. Hit the power button and the throttle. Throttle. Mm -hmm. There we 
are. There we go. Now, normally in this situation, uh, this was pre-activated, um, but in this situation, uh, you would have to uh, activate the controller first. Then once the new controller is in, um, obviously there's two flashing apps. There's XO controller or XIO flasher and the scooter hacking app. I do not recommend that you use the XIO flasher anymore. Um, it is a extremely bloatware. Um, it's they're usually all the proprietary software and hacking that uh, scooter hacking did, and they're just reselling it um, as a tool. Um, oh. So none of that actually goes back to Scooter Hacking, so you have to hit the donate button. If you're not donating to Scooter Hacking, who did all the extra work on the firmware, uh, use the Scooter Hacking utility. It does all the same functions. It's free. They're not going to like bombard you with pay for this, donate this, buy me a coffee. Um, you know, I'm all about I'm all about supporting people. Um, you know, for doing that kind of stuff. Uh, but like I said, Exo Flasher is um, essentially utilizing the work of Scooter Hacking for their own benefit. They're not actually using their own work. Um, Good to know. So Scooter Hacking is a website or an app or both? So it's both. And they have the Scooter Hacking app. It's not on iOS. Neither of them are working on iOS. So you do need Android or PC. If you're using PC, you can use 9Flasher uh, to flash it. Um, but like I said, you will need to activate two things. You need to activate the controller. You now there's two ways to do that. One is to go to the Scooter Hacking app. You can click on Commands and click Activate. The other option is to go through the Segway app, New Rider Tutorial. It's the same activation that you go through when you first open your 9Bot. It'll open up and say you do the New Ride Tutorial. Beep, it'll beep at you. It'll be stuck in the uh, eco. It won't change because essentially you're saying you have to do the Safety Rider. You can bypass that by hitting the Activate button under Commands in the Scooter Hacking app once you connect to the scooter. Once you do that, you'll then flash your custom firmware if you want to run that. Um, either way, regardless if you're running an a aftermarket battery or not, you still need to activate it. Custom firmware is optional. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and tuck the wires in. All right, there we go. So everything is tucked in. Uh, we don't forget we still got to put our bolts on our motor, uh, but we don't need that to put our cover back on. Um, and the cover is literally just going to come right down here like this. Like I said, before you put the cover on, for the biggest thing, uh, make sure everything's working before you put the cover back on. There's a lot of screws. <laughs> make sure it's all True. working. That's a lot of screws to have to take off again. Uh, so make sure everything uh, is working before you put the cover back on. All right, you guys, we fixed the nine bots all working, so I'll see you for the next video.